of our projects I would like to do this year is called a puzzle tube. So I'm showing you a couple of examples up front. This is one that a student did in the past. So you can see it's really two parts. There's a, a lid and a base. And in the base, that's where we're going to put whatever uh, we decide. It's usually some sort of candy like Skittles or M&Ms. Here's another one. So you can see the same kind of ideas going on. There's a little notch here as well. That notch is super important, right? That's actually what makes it a puzzle. So then also you can see here on the lid, we found a picture of a bear and, and traced it on, and then we embossed it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a new component. I usually will just start with the base. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll hit okay on that. Notice I always go to new component. Now I'll go to sketch. And I'm just going to start by drawing uh, the base itself. I will go ahead and just uh, come up with a circle. And the circle, I've got to pay attention to these diameter numbers. Okay, because I'm going to use those later on. So I'll say in this diameter, you know what, I'm just going to make it uh, 2. Right, so there's my diameter of 2. Now I'll go ahead and extrude that. And let's make that, oh, let's just keep our number simple. So we'll make it 2, okay? So we've got a diameter of 2, and we've got a, a height of 2. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. Important, I'm going to go ahead and shell this out now. So here, there's shell. Okay, so we'll click shell. And I'm going to come in here, click the space, and I'll, for right now, I'll drag the arrow. Now, I want to be careful here. Right now, I'm at 0.10, right, for our shell thickness. I remember, I've got to put a groove in there, right? There's going to be a groove all the way around this, kind of like, uh, kind of like you see here. So I've got to make sure that that's thick enough to put that groove in. So I think I'll have to go back down here and edit my shell, or edit feature. But I think I'm going to make that like 0.2. Because what I'll probably do on the groove is make it like an eighth inch, which is 0.125. So that should give it enough support to hold. All right. I've got the bottom really done. Now, if I want to get fancy, what I could do is I could come down here on the back of this, or on the bottom of it, rather. And I'll just go up and do a polygon. And I'll create a polygon that's just slightly bigger. You know? And I may even come up here and use this here tangent constraint. So I'll use tangent and say, all right, you and you become tangent. That way it kind of lines up a little better. And then I'll extrude that as well. It's, this is more of a decorative piece than anything. So I'll probably make that an eighth inch as well. Now, so that I can go ahead and get the other piece made, I'm going to go up here. But first, I'm going to go up here where it says unsaved, and I'll, I'll check that. So I'm going to put another new component in. This time I'll call this one the top. So there it is. And I'm going to use the top of this, of the bottom piece already. So I'll come over here and draw that circle. Now I don't want it to be exact because my plan is to kind of 3D print this. So rather than it just being 2, I'll say like 2.03 maybe. I need to give it just a little bit of space in there, right? Because I got to remember my tolerance is when I 3D print. And I'll probably come out here and make this another circle outside. Now I could have used, instead of drawing another circle, I could have just come up here to offset like that and just clicked on that circle and said, you know what, let's just make you a little bit bigger. And then I'll extrude that. And here's a neat little trick. You can, instead of, like, maybe I didn't, re maybe I forgot what value I had. I know I needed to go that way, but check this out. I can actually go right here to where it says distance. And I can say to object. So check this out. Now I can just come down here and I say, right, I want it to come down to here. And look at that. It did it. So I'll hit OK. Now, you notice that that lid, not really a lid yet, that's just an outer casing. So, I'll come back here and do a sketch on top of that. I'm just going to make a circle that 
is even with it. So now I'll extrude the whole thing. It's like two shapes. Probably make it an eighth inch again. So there is my top and my bottom. Now, I'm not quite done with the top. What I've got to do is I've got to put a little nub in there. So if we take a look at this puzzle tube and we look underneath the lid here, I'm talking about this piece right here. We got to make that piece. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility off on the base because right now it's just kind of in the way. All right, so now I'm going to go to sketch and I'll click here. To go ahead and draw the nub, first off, I'm going to take a measurement here. That diameter is 2.03. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just, I'm going to hit P, or I could go up here and say create and say project and include and then project, or I can just press P. And I want to take that circle there. I'm basically going to project that. So now I'm going to come over here. And I'll probably start, kind of line up in the center point here. And I'm going to draw a line that's about an eighth inch away. And then I'll draw kind of like a T here. So another line. And I'm here too. I'm going to say from here to here, I want that to be 0.125 divided by. Same as 0.063. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to take my line tool and just kind of come back up straight with it. Same thing over here. All right. Then I will extrude that. So I'm going to click both pieces. Now I do, in my case, I'm going to rotate that a little bit. And then I'll draw an arrow. And I need to kind of remember this too. So I'm going to make it, just to keep my number simple, I'll say 0.125. All right, so I've got the nub on there. I recommend going ahead because it just makes sense to make it move a little more efficiently. If I put us a chamfer here on this corner, it doesn't have to be much of one, but just enough to take the edge off. That'll help things slide a little bit smoother. So I'm going to leave mine at like 0.03. We found that number is pretty magical in the world of 3D printing. Okay, now I can always come back in here later and modify things, but let's go ahead and move on to the next part. So I'm zooming out now. I'm going to go ahead and turn my visibility back on on the base here, right? I'm going to go ahead and just click that eyeball there, and you'll see the base. is It's still ghosted, but that's because I'm not in the whole assembly. So once I click that, now I can actually pull these two things apart because they're neither they're not jointed, right? All right. So let's talk about how we can put the maze on here. So I'm talking about the pathway here on the uh, on the tube itself. So that little nub we just drew, how does that work? Okay, same kind of concept here. How does it work? All right. So we're gonna select the base now. So I'm just going to highlight and click the little radio button by the base. In fact, something that may help right now is I can go ahead and turn the visibility off on the top. All right. So I'm on the base. And now watch this. I'm going to expand this a little bit. I'm going to click there. And see this origin? I'm actually going to expand it as well. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. What I'm trying to do is find a plane that is perpendicular. So this XY plane could work. XZ is flat. I need it to be perpendicular to that cylinder. So YZ could also work. XY and YZ. Either one is fine. I'm going to take the first one, XY, and say, I'll just right click on it and say create sketch. Okay, notice the sketch plane pops up. A couple things I could do. I could also come over here to where it says slice. Right there, that little check box. I could click it and it'll slice that graphic in half. So if you rotate that, you can see it's basically just cut the shape in half. You may want to do that, that may help you visualize things better. Uh, to me personally, I don't think I need it, but I'm going to square the sketch back up. 
I'm gonna take a rectangle, start here at the origin, go up to the top. I already know the height of that. It should be two, right? So I'll press two. Now the width, that's a different story, right? So for the width, we're gonna actually have to plug in and, and get our circumference of the circle. So there's a couple of different formulas you can use for that. Here is if you had the radius, so two times pi times r, so the radius, or you got circumference equals pi times diameter. Right. I've gone ahead and done the actual calculation. Here in this situation, our radius would be one, our diameter would be two, right? So if I take our pi times diameter, the actual answer is going to be 6.28319 and several additional numbers as well, right? If I just take 3.14, I'm going to get 6.28. Okay, so check out how this works. So let's go back in here to Fusion. I'm going to enter in for this, for my, my length. I'm going to say 6.28, and I'll hit Enter. All that maze needs to happen right there. If I go over 6.28, or maybe put this another way, if I go over 6. Point, you know, the actual calculation, when this sketch wraps, it's going to wrap upon itself. So let me show you how that looks. If I just take a rectangle, just to, just to show you, I'm going to just draw a rectangle from end to end here. And I hit finish sketch and then I go up and do, I hit create and I say emboss. So I'm going to click there and then I'll say for faces, the, the, you know, the cylinder. That is going to work. Now watch as I rotate this though. Do you see right here that wrapped completely around, but it didn't. See that gap? That's okay on this. But let's go back in here now and I'll show you what, what else I was talking about. If if we were to edit that sketch, so we come in here and I right click and say just edit the sketch here. And I take this rectangle past it. So something like that. In other words, it goes past the 6.28. Now I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'll go up here to create and I'll say emboss. Okay, so if I do that. And then I click, like it says, it says what profile. So I'll say I want this and this. And then for your face, it's always going to be the outside of the cylinder. You can see Fusion is giving me an error right now. And it won't even let me hit OK. What's happening is that is actually overlapping itself. OK, so it can't physically be done. So that's why that, that dimension is pretty important. So let's back up a little bit. I'm going to just kind of start that off. I just kind of wanted you to see the, how it worked. So we know we're 2 and then 6.28. All right, so that's why all my magic has to happen here. I'm going to start in the corner. And I'm going to make this little spot right here be my main entry point. Now I do want to make sure that now right now my grid spacing is set to be a quarter inch apart. Remember, our nub is what, an eighth inch? So let's check it out because it's hard to remember all these. So let's, let's get our top back up here. There it is. And let's rotate that so we can actually take a measurement on it so we can know for sure, right? It's kind of an important piece of information. So what we're doing is we're seeing how tall is that piece. So I can just hit my measure tool, get that line in the back and see that the length is 0.125. All right, so these gaps, you know, this gap right here is 0.25. It's gonna be a pretty loose fit, but I could make that a little tighter if I want. I can say from here to here. Right now it's a little bit over 0.25. Technically it just needs to be 0.125. I wouldn't recommend that because everything's gonna be a super, super super snug fit right so I would I'd probably say something like 0.13 you know, so it's got plenty of room to maneuver in there maybe even a little bigger than that maybe like a 0.135 all right so now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to continue drawing my maze and now remember I've got to have a pathway here 
So I think I'm going to come over here. And you know what? Now might be a good time to use this slice. So now I can see the grid a little bit better. So what I'm going to do here also is I can continue to dimension from here to here. I kind of want to keep my gaps consistent, so I'll make that 0.135. Do the same thing here. Now we're starting to get a, a little bit away from me here too, aren't we? So I'm going to come back over here and say, let's just make that 0.25. And all I'm doing there is just trying to keep things uniform. So I'm, I'm trying to use consistent numbers. So my gap here would be, you know, wherever the nub is going to go is probably going to be a point. 135 so even in here as you go through here you see like this extra line here I would probably trim that out so all I did to trim is I went up here to the scissors and then I clicked on the line I wanted to get out now I'm gonna continue this I will continue this throughout right let's go ahead and show you how to wrap that so I'm gonna say I'm done I'm going to hit finish sketch. Here's my sketch. It's finished. I'm going to actually come over here to, on that sketch three and rename it and say maze. Because as time passes here, I'm probably going to make all kinds of edits to this thing. So uh, that way I can come in here and I can easily find out which one I need. All right. So from here, I'll go to create and I will choose emboss. And then it says, what sketch profiles do you want? And sketch profiles are the ones I drew. Then after I select those, I'll select faces, which is going to be the outside of the cylinder. So sketch profile. I'll hit select. Actually, I would want that. That's my path right now. It's just to right here. All right, I would continue on. Now my face, click the cylinder, and now click OK. And now what we've done is the actual path here, this, that's where the nub would go. Now here's something else I would consider. Right now to 3D print that, to get up underneath here, we would need some supports. In order to avoid that, here's what we've found. We take the chamfer tool and we just create a small little chamfer around and we make it uniform. So I'm gonna say, let's, let's try with like a 0.03 and then just to make sure that it will fit, let's do a 0.03 on the other side as well. So right here, yeah, that's gonna get plenty of room. And then I would do that all the way around. So I would come over here as well. And I'd say, all right, I'm gonna chamfer that to also be 0.03. And what those little bitty chamfers do, they do a couple of things. They're really there to help support 3D printing, but they can also, they can also make things move a little more efficiently. So just some thoughts to think about as you do the project.